What up guys, TK here and today we're looking at Macintosh floppy drives from the late 80s, early 90s. After 20 plus years, they're basically all full up with dust and other horrid contaminants and you know, you might find they're not working. So today I'm going to show you how to basically get it back up and running. Now here's one I prepared earlier and as you can see, beautiful snap action, really moving quite nice and smoothly. Snaps straight into position with the head there and that's what you want now we've got to figure out how to get there with this disgusting behemoth so let's get stuck in so the first order of business once you've got the drive out of the computer is to basically take off this horrible disgusting yellowed plastic case i'm pretty sure these were designed to um I guess keep dust out, but as you can see, they do a terrible job. Just, this thing is absolutely caked in it. So basically what you want is a nice, clean, quick action like this one here. As you can see, that is absolutely perfect. There's very little friction on this carriage because there's no dust in here and we've properly lubricated it. And the head sits in a position perfectly every time. That's what we want. Unlike this one, where all these surfaces are clogged up with dust, the carriage can't move freely, and you can see the head has a lot of trouble getting in the perfect position. Now, on the table, or on the bench, you know, you can flick this in a position manually by pulling forward on this carriage. But when this is buried inside your Mac, you know, half the time it's not going to read the disc at all. The other problem you can have is with the ejection motor assembly. That can uh, get misaligned and stop the carriage moving properly, so we'll show you how to fix that as well real simple. So let's start by disassembling the drive. Now you don't actually have to do a whole lot to get one of these drives apart. First of all you want to take that spring off and that spring off. You can leave them attached to the top carriage. You just uh, basically want to disconnect them from the bottom so it can be hard when there's dust everywhere. You may want to clean your drive before disassembly. I prefer to clean it after because otherwise you're just going to have to clean it twice. So just real gentle with these springs because you don't want to accidentally stretch them and plastically deform them you ruin your spring and then you're hunting for another one I've done that to another drive and I will be showing you how I replace that spring a little later in the video so alright we've taken those two springs off it's now a simple matter of wriggling this top carriage up and alright so we've taken those two springs off we've got this plastic piece here that helps lift the head when there's no floppy inserted so what we want to do is lift this center pin with a screwdriver and we can then slide that off out of the way so that means we won't have any problems with the head and that's great. One key thing, don't lift this head manually more than you know half a centimeter because otherwise you will actually damage the metal spring that keeps it shut and helps it clamp onto the floppy disk. You can fix it after you've done that but the easiest way, don't do it in the first place. So now what we have to do is push this carriage into the floppy inserted position and then we can wriggle the carriage arm back and forth to allow us to lift the top part off. How do we do that? First of all, slide this linkage out. Second, slide that linkage and then extend this one. It snaps down into position. We can then lift from the front and we then just sort of fight with it a little bit until it comes up. Come on. There we go, fairly similar. And you can see, absolutely caked in dust. Who even knows what that is? That is filthy. Absolutely filthy. So as you can see, I was able to do that with leaving all the springs on here. Make sure you don't lose any of them. These two on the side aren't too important, but the other three are quite important. And generally, you don't want to lose any of them, so no excuses. As you can see, we're doing this all without screwdrivers so far. Next, we'll get you to take the ejection motor off. Simple Phillips head. These aren't done up too tight, which is good. He says, as he finds out they're done up fairly tight. All right, let's find the proper screwdriver. Next up, two Phillips heads allow you to take out the ejection motor. Some people have actually found when they've had ejection motor problems that they were able to just remove the ejection motor and use the drive that way. Fine when your Mac's in pieces on a bench, doesn't work when your drive is inside the computer you'll always be having to manually eject it using the 
ejection pin here, which will ruin your day more days than not. So, there we go. And we just wriggle this connector up at the back and that ejection motor is off. And so we're here with this filthy monster. So basically what we're gonna do is get in here with your fingers. You probably wanna wear gloves because this is technically a biohazard probably. And just pull all the dust off, shake it out, blow it out, get compressed air, methylated spirits, and you want this completely clean. However, just cleaning it like this isn't enough. You need to actually go down further. So get your pliers. What we've got to do now is you may see these four little black plastic rings sitting on these steel posts. We've got to very gently grab and just wiggle and lift real slow, real gentle. You don't yank real slow, real gentle. And peel those up. I'm not pulling hard. Being gentle and slow is the way to go. Imagine it's, uh, you know, your first time, which it probably is your first time fixing a floppy drive. You don't go in all rough, you be real smooth about it. And so now we can lift this second carriage and we can importantly clean under here, blow all that out with compressed air and go from there. So let's get the old methylated spirits, douse this thing and blow it out with some compressed air and I won't bore you with the details. Oh, that is, oh, what is that? Like, oh. At least it's not obviously hair. I can't stand hair. Hair makes me sick. I disassembled somebody's mum's phone and I just wanted to throw up. I could have cloned about six of the, just from what I found in the keypad. Let's get some compressed air onto this bad boy. If you think I'm being liberal with the mineral or methylated spirits, uh, you would not be wrong. But it is cheap. Now here's a great tip, if you're ever doing a video like this, don't film yourself blowing something out with compressed air. Let somebody else film that, because if you film it, you're just gonna get all the dust and gunk all over your own lens, and that's expensive, so don't do it. So yeah, uh, you may find there's like a white milky residue on the circuit board after you do this. That's just from the methylated spirits uh, dissolving the white lithium grease from the drive and, you know, taking it with it and leaving it on the bottom of the PCB. I've never had it cause any problems. It's a little unsightly, so you can try and scrub that off if you like, but really nothing too much to worry about. You can see here, you've got these three switches there for detecting the various parts of the disc. Uh, this is a high density drive or a super drive, as Apple called it, so it could deal with high density discs. So you've got an extra switch here to see if there's a hole. If there is, that means it's a high density disc. This doesn't have one as it's a double density disc. This one's here for detecting whether it's right protected or not, and then I think one's just there to say, hey, there's a disc in general. Um, but you know, fairly, fairly simple. As you can see here, this 800K drive only has two switches. Uh, one's probably just for disc presence and the other one is for write protect. So we've cleaned it all up. We're gonna go ahead and grease it and go ahead with reassembly. So we've got our white lithium grease. I tried using some other more entertaining lubricants, but uh, they got very sticky and disgusting. It would have been a good gag for YouTube, but alas, no. Um, so we just gonna cover the head up and just give it a very light spray. You don't wanna get any really on this drive motor either. And there we go, we've ruined that already. Just not too much, just a touch. Get some on each one of those uh, pins because they move. Oh, that stuff smells fantastic. That's probably a bad thing. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and spray a bit on here. Here we can be a bit less careful. Get it on my hands, read the first aid. Doesn't seem too dangerous. Um, I'll line that up the back here and just see that it moves smoothly. Let it work in there. That feels pretty nice. We'll spray some down by the ejection motor as well. You want all the contacting metal surfaces to have a little bit of lubrication on them. I mean, how else is fresh dust gonna stick to the board, right? So yeah, we'll just, uh, you know what, I said be careful, but nah, just spray tons on there and make a mess. Who cares, right? Um, all right, so that's feeling pretty okay. So now you gotta refit these little things. I haven't found a good way to do this other than just pressing hard. They go on fairly simply. 
Try not to lose any of them, which is a good tip for life, really. If you break these rubber rings, um, or whatever they're made of, I don't know what you'd do to replace them. You could maybe use gasket material. I mean, you'd have to punch them yourself. Um, if you've got a good idea on how to replace those, if you do break them, throw it down in the comments because I simply, you know, I, I, I always like to think, hey, if I damage this part, how would I replace it? If I damage that part, how would I replace it? I don't like when I'm fixing things to get to a point where something's just garbage. So yeah, if you have an idea for how to replace those, you know, throw it down below. So we've got that carriage back on and moving nice and smoothly. Uh, so the other parts that really rub are these four pins which sit here, 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 and here. You can see they're running these rails. So we'll lubricate this by getting it all over these. And see how that goes. You don't want too much of it on there because it's gonna get all over your discs and make them disgusting. We'll just spray a little bit down low. That really does smell fantastic. Jeez, really sweet. And as you can see, I'm getting it all in the drive. So hopefully it doesn't conduct electricity. Uh, it can be a bit complicated due to this little pin here to get this back in. It just, I, I generally find, slide the carriage forward, tuck it under there, and then push the carriage back and it all tends to uh, sit in nicely. And then you just get that pin and that there, and you're sorted. So yeah, pretty simple. Um, and then you've just got to reattach these two springs and your drive is back together. As you can see, it's really not mechanically complicated. After this, all you've got to do is reattach the ejection motor. One thing again, and I've said it before and I will say it again, do not be rough with these springs. You will plastically deform them and then they'll be junk. I've done that and I'm going to show you how to fix it in a minute, but you know, just try and avoid it in the first place got gunk on my disc, that's always bad. All right, so let's try it now. Ah, forgot a part. You gotta put this back on so that the head lifts up with the carriage. Try not to get too much dust back in your uh, drive as you're putting it back together, by the way. So, uh, otherwise the entire exercise was pointless. So, this sits here. You're gonna, you're gonna have to lift the head, but just do it real carefully. Lift the head up, and then just slide. Nope, done it wrong. Oh dear. All right, so just lift the head up a little, slide that on, it'll lock in place. There we go, that's good. So let's try it out with a disc. Oh my God, please work. Look at that. Look at that, I'm just real gentle. And it snaps straight into place, the head's bang on where it should be. So that's looking good. We'll pop the ejection motor back on. I'll uh, cut here to show you how to fix a dodgy ejection motor problem. So the way to tell if your problems with your floppy drive are actually caused by the ejection motor instead of just dust and grit clogging up the carriage is quite simple. You lift the ejection motor and if this pin is at three or nine, that's at least part of your problem. So the way you fix it is quite simple. Get a small screwdriver and flip that tab down and lift this steel plate. Real simple, as you can see, there's a gear train in here so all you have to do is lift this gear here, rearrange that so it's pointing at the 12 o'clock position. We're calling this 12, 3, 6, 9. As you can see here, we're in the 9 o'clock position. Now we want to fix that. We lift this gear, first of all. We rearrange this to the 12 o'clock position and then put this gear back in. And then your ejection motor assembly is sorted. Now one problem you may have is that your gears have disintegrated or they fall apart when you try and work with them. Now there is a solution to that. Somebody has actually measured these gears and designed a 3D model so you can 3D print them. Um, I'll throw a link in below. You can get them printed at Shapeways, order them online and get them shipped to your door. So that's really cool. However, our gears are fine. So we're gonna go ahead and just pop that gear out. Real careful. drive that back to where it should be and pop that back in. So now that's at the correct position and we can pop the steel plate back on. Just sits in there, clips in place with some light pressure and we can pop that back in the drive. 
So that is how you fix the ejection motor assembly on your Macintosh floppy drive. Pretty cool. We'll now put this back on, the ejection motor. Um, you'll want to pop this lead on probably before you screw it down. Just a little bit easy to get there at the back. So we'll just pop that in. Come on. Smooth and gentle, you know, don't rush these things. I'm uh, going to a barbecue later, so I probably should be rushing a little bit, but... So yeah, you probably just want to put this lead on first. Uh, it's a bit easier to do it beforehand. Um, you know, if you like, spray a little lithium grease on the gear there. Can't hurt. Probably dissolves the gear, but uh, nah, joking. Um, go ahead and screw it down. Two screws. I, I love the fact you can undo such a complicated mechanism with all these little linkages. And you can just do it with two Phillips screws and the rest is just springs and wriggling. So we've got that back in place. We'll just lubricate. You can see these pins sliding these holes so they could use a little love, little lube. Love and lube, pretty much the same thing. No, I didn't say that. All right, so just check that we're still moving freely. Yep, beautiful, look at that action. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in and see how we go. All right, so we've got this floppy drive plugged in. Moment of truth, is it gonna work? Covered in white lithium grease, uh, it smells beautiful. Snaps in beautifully, but does it read? Doesn't sound great. Oh, that's, that's a no. Oh, that's really sad. All right, so I realized the problem was I applied this white lithium grease using an aerosol can, as you saw. That was a terrible idea because it means some of it got on the heads. I've cleaned the heads, and I hope this works. Oh, by crikey, yes. Ah. <sighs> Well, that is a lot off my mind. That is a successful fix, my friends. Well, that is just a big win. Really happy about that. Disk drive is working great. So that is how you fix your Macintosh floppy drive. Whatever you do, don't spray your white lithium grease on. Spray it into a cup or a can and then apply it manually and you will have a lot less problems. You won't have to clean the heads. But yeah, just like to say a big thanks to uh, everyone who's been watching and a uh, big howdy to all the new viewers. And I got a lot more coming up soon, so yeah. TK out.